I bought this dual hard drive enclosure on AliExpress. It takes two, two and a half inch SATA drives and the product page for it said it was a RAID enclosure. Does that mean that it just has a hardware interface to your computer and you can use software RAID or does it really have a hardware RAID controller in it? I'm going to find out. There's always a little bit of mystery when you buy something on AliExpress. So I guess I'm doing my part to demystify one particular product just like I appreciate when other people do. So I'm gonna put it through its paces, find out is it really possible to get a RAID, hardware RAID enclosure closure for two and a half inch SATA drives for 23, 24 bucks. I guess we'll find out. Well, the packaging was nice and that's been true for a lot of Chinese products I bought lately. The fit and finish has really improved and the um, build quality as well as just the out of the box experience, if you will. So this looks nice. It's a machined aluminum. And there we go. I was going to show you the instructions list some dip switches and there they are. So it's looking more and more like there is a hardware RAID option on here. Look in the instructions. There's your RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD, and SPAN. But it comes complete with a screwdriver. <laughs> Always love when tools come with it and screws. This is a USB-C to USB-A 2.0. This is just four pins. And this is the USB 3.0, five gigabit uh, USB-C to USB-A cable. So this one's for power only. This is the one for data. And yeah, I was going to test it basically with uh, two drives appearing independently on my M1 MacBook Pro and then software RAID them together. And I thought I would test that performance versus using the dip switches, but I'm not actually convinced that I would be able to see both drives on the single USB connection. Enough speculation, I'm going to get my drives and we'll give this a whirl. I've configured for RAID 1, aka mirroring, just a couple of 5400 RPM, inexpensive, but good quality Samsung drives. And this is just going to be used for general backup, so I do want these to be redundant. I should get a little bit faster reads, but the write speed should be the same as one of these hard drives, which isn't very fast being a spinning disk 5400. Well, it's definitely compact, and I like that it's fanless. Uh, hopefully it won't overheat with spinning drives, and hopefully they'll spin down. That's one question I have. But the next step is just to plug it into my Mac and try it out. The Mac, of course, has Thunderbolt 4 ports these days with a USB-C cable. So I don't have any use currently for the USB-C to USB-A 3.0 cable, but as long as I find some good quality uh, USB-C Thunderbolt type cables, or it just has to be a USB 3.0 certified cable for the data, I should be able to use any C to C cable for the five volts here. Welcome to my desktop where I'm gonna try out the drive. I'm on my M1 Mac Pro and it's all USB-C and Thunderbolt. So I've got this 40 gigabit rated Thunderbolt 4 cable. It's actually pretty handy. Being short, if I'm using a meter and trying to measure power flows, for example, it's good to put in line without adding a whole bunch of cable length. It's been really durable and obviously portable. So I'm gonna use that for the data side. And then for power, well, I actually did a video where I converted a Thunderbolt display to repurpose the MagSafe connector as just a power supply, which powers a power delivery uh, conversion module inside the display. So this is the cable that comes out of that, and it's got all of the USB-C PDOs up to 45 watts. So five volts is one of the options that it can provide. So I'll just route that over here. And by the way, that video, I'll link to it. It's the one that made it so that I could power and get data all over one cord. And that was because I was able to convert this Thunderbolt display to USB-C for power and USB-C for Thunderbolt. So watch that video if you're curious. I also installed this anchor hub in the back and I go into detail for how I got 100 watt power delivery to my MacBook using that hub. Back to the question at hand, I'm gonna plug in the data first and then I'll get the power, oh, there's lights. I hadn't expected lights. Maybe it will be powered just off the port. These are kind of funny. The ports on these M1 Mac Pros, these are actually, so they're USB-C compatible and they're Thunderbolt 4, obviously, but they won't negotiate the higher voltage uh, USB-C PDOs. That is, these always run at five volts for USB-C devices. Normally, you'll have five volts, you'll have nine volts, you'll have 12, 15, 20, like a iPhone 8, I happen to know, was uh, nine volts and two amps for 18 watts. In any case, these provide 15 watts, but it's always five volts. And uh, they use obviously three amps, makes the math work on that. In any case, it is lit up and stable. Let's look at the old disk manager. Oh, hey, there I am too. I'll try to get out of the shot shadow wise and to show you what's going on in the disk manager, I had to allow connection and the disk view just attached was not readable. Okay, I'm gonna have to initialize it then. Hey, there we go. So we have an external drive showing up. 
It just sees it as one external drive and the RAID functionality is all being handled down here in the case at a hardware level. So that's actually pretty cool. That means no configuration uh, you know, per computer. It's nice that I can use this portably and plug it into any sort of device, including a router that doesn't know about how to control RAID volumes. So let's give it some tests. Okay, disk is plugged in and I haven't put a file system on there yet. On Mac, it's kind of confusing. Gotta hit erase. So let's put it onto a very common file system, which is the Mac OS Extended. I think that's called HFS Plus. Oh, I hope I got that right. But anyways, we're gonna use that format, used for years on the Mac side of things. Of course, these days they want you to use Apple file system. And I understand it does have some advantages for SSDs. And I'm not sure that it really offers anything new for good old spinning drives. So we'll select the drive, HFS Plus, at the five gigabyte level. Let's see what it does. So 103 megabytes a second write speed is respectable for a couple of old spinning disks. I would have expected to see faster reads because you have the advantage of being able to pluck from both drives. Here's some info about USB 3.0 speed. Maximum data transfer rate of five gigabits per second, which turns into 625 megabytes per second, theoretically. So well above what we're doing here. So we're definitely not limited by the USB interface. I suppose we're probably limited by the speed of the spinning disks inside. All right, now I'm gonna simulate a failure, which I feel like that's the step that a lot of people don't do when they set up RAID, is they're like, okay, it's redundant, I've got a mirror, uh, it'll be fine. But then when a disk does fail, what do you do? Are the special steps? That's the time you don't wanna screw something up. So I just put a full screen recording, actually the one that I just did for this one, onto my RAID 1 mirror, 666 megabytes. So now what I'm gonna do is take one of the physical disks out. I'm gonna erase it uh, separately. And then uh, we'll see what the enclosure does on its own with just one disc in there. And then what it does when you put a second disc in that is blank. Does it rebuild on its own? Uh, or does it just basically offer you, well, I've still got one disc with uh, data on it. You figure out what you're gonna do with that. I don't know, we'll find out. Okay, I've got my USB 3 or maybe it's 3.1 adapter plugged directly into the SATA port on this hard drive. This is the one obviously I took out. We'll plug it in and see what it looks like. Hopefully it's just a just a regular old disc. Aha, there it is. HFS plus. And there's our file. No problem. Oh yeah, that's what you'd expect. So it's just a mirror on both discs. Nothing special. Works just like an individual disc. But now here's the question. Ejecting that. Now we've got the enclosure with just a single drive inside. And uh, I have no idea what it should do or what it will do here. We do have flashing lights, that's good. Oh, hey, there you go, HFS Plus, that's the same volume. Open it up and it's got the same file in there. Okay, so this is basically just operating as a single disk when the RAID has been taken apart and regular old files are presented like you would expect. The file's been deleted off of this drive, so it is empty, but I didn't reformat or anything. It's not uninitialized. It's still HFS plus, it just doesn't have any files. And I'm gonna try to plug it in. We'll even try to put it in the case, but I'm willing to forego that. Oh, there we go. All right, so we are still selected for RAID 1 mirror. The top drive I erased, the one on the bottom, has the original file on it. And let's see how they appear. Okay, there's HFS Plus, that's the name of the original volume, and there's the file. So the question is, are they rebuilding themselves? Is one disk copying to the other to synchronize? I feel like the flashing might be the rebuilding of the RAID. There's nothing in the instructions about it, big surprise. But I couldn't see anything about disks flashing, other than it did say that that's reading or writing, which is the only two things that disks can do. It's been a few minutes, we're still just flashing blue light, so I'm gonna eject the enclosure. And pull it apart again, unplug it, and here's that disc that I wrote onto as part of a mirror, and then I verified the file was there, then I erased it, and then I put it back into the enclosure, and then we'll plug it back in individually and see what we see. Okay, it comes up, HFS Plus. Whoa, there's the file. It rebuilt itself. Wow, I'm pretty amazed, actually. The problem with this I see is that you don't know when you have a failure. You know, it's a hardware RAID, which is cool uh, for 24 bucks, but you're just creating like this, you know, single drive that as far as the computer knows, it's just connecting to a single, it could be a USB uh, memory stick. And you won't really know if one of the drives in here has failed. 
So, I mean, the whole reason you mirror two discs is so that you can watch for failures. And as soon as one fails, you replace that disc and it gets rebuilt from the other. So your data is always secure. But in this case, if you never know that your disc failed, what does that get you? It seems to be good at rebuilding itself. I just don't know what these lights mean. And I'm still a little nervous about actually knowing when a disc uh, goes bad, but um, that's been fun. Now let's try the striping mode because that's probably the best way to use this drive. In that case, you're gonna know if one of the discs fails. So both dip switches off for RAID 0 striping mode. So now it's gonna be one big disc. It's actually going to have the space of both discs. And just like before, it appears to the OS as a single disc. We have to initialize it though, because now we are in a different mode than before. So there we go, we'll erase. Okay, there it is. Let's drop some files on there. Okay, so three files are on there. And if we unplug one of the disks now, you're screwed. Because with RAID 0 striping, if either disk fails, your entire volume is gone. You will get faster read and write speeds because you've got twice as many heads doing the work. So as you send a file to it, it's gonna break up the file and each you know, drive is gonna be responsible for writing half or roughly half that size of the file. Same with reads, it can go seek on both drives and bring the file back together, send it back. So you generally get twice the speed, I mean, not exactly, but something like twice the speed. So we'll set the target drive Single drive performance was under, a little under 100. Looks like we're getting almost 175 for the dual drive write performance. That's gonna go pretty quickly. And with striping, 187 write performance in the end and reading is really cooking. Remember we saw about 111 megabytes per second on a single drive. So 222 would be the complete doubling and 216 is awfully close to that. So very little overhead, it looks like, in running the stripe mode. And of course, it's worth noting that now it shows up as a two terabyte drive because the two are striped together as one volume, uh, twice the speed, but uh, you only need one disc to fail and you've got two discs to fail. So I'm not great at statistics and probabilities, but I think that that's significantly increasing your risks. For comparison's sake, I took out the HDDs and I've got a Samsung 860 Pro here, SSD. So I'll put this in and I'll show you how it compares in terms of performance. And obviously there's only one disc in right now. I only have one of these. I don't have another one to go with it right now. I actually had to set it to JBOD in order for my computer to recognize it. It seems like for whatever reason, it doesn't like to read this as a one disc when it's set to mirroring. Anyways, it comes up as a regular volume like I would expect. And I'm going to set that as the target drive. And let's start a test. So really good performance. Um, we're getting 300 megabytes, so it looks like, and three almost, looks like 375 on the way back out. So much faster as expected than the hard disks with the spinning disks inside. The real performance would be if you had two of these and you set it up to RAID 1 striping. One thing that's really cool about having the RAID hardware built into the enclosure is you can hook it up to devices that have no idea how to deal with a RAID volume, such as this Apple Extreme Base Station. It's a sixth generation AC router and it's older, but it does work pretty well and it has a USB port in the back. So I've got this mocked up just to try it out. This isn't how I'm gonna keep it permanently, but I've got it powered off of the magnetic backpack battery for my iPhone. I actually did a review on that, so I'll link it here. And I've got data connected from the port of the enclosure to the USB 2 port on the back of this router. So it's not super fast, but it is a really nice interface. This is actually a time capsule. So when I browse to it on the network, I can see the volume inside of the time capsule, as well as inside the new enclosure. Really easy to use, even if it's not all that fast. You could also use just the enclosure by itself with any router. For example, here's one, this is a Linksys WRT 1900AC. And it has a USB 3 port on here, which is gonna make it a lot faster. Not to mention, it's just a lot more powerful router. So you probably get some speed increase just based on the processing power inside. By the way, the cable that came with the enclosure, I came to find out actually is a USB-C to C cable. It just has a USB-A adapter on the end of it. So that's pretty cool. So is the Acasis EC7552 worthwhile? Yeah, I think it is. I wouldn't hesitate to use it as a striped volume for video editing, large files, something that's in work on its way to coming, becoming something else. When you need a lot of space and high performance, you could put two discs in here, 
ideally SSDs, and run RAID 0 striping. So high speed, lots of storage, that could be really useful as a kind of a scratch volume or a working volume. If you're going to use it for a mirrored volume, you've just got to realize, as far as I can tell, it won't tell you when one of the disks fails. It's got flashy lights, but there's no rhyme or reason to them that I can figure out. If someone does know what they mean, please let me know. But, you know, you can use this as a mirrored drive. We saw that it rebuilds itself. We also saw that you can take a disk out, plug it in directly, and it works just fine. So there's nothing you know, proprietary about the way that it's writing to the disk. But I wouldn't recommend this for to set and forget long-term emergency storage. It needs someone to come and be looking in on it periodically to check the health of the disks. It also doesn't have the um, smart functionality, so you're not going to get that kind of reporting about the health of the disks either. But because it does have a hardware, you know, RAID controller on board, this appears as a single disk to anything that'll read a disk. So you can hang it off of an old computer or sitting in the corner and use it as a low buck NAS. Or what I think I'm going to do is hook it up to a router, and this will just be an easy shared storage for the household. Plus it's portable, that's actually maybe its best use case. Having a mirror drive that you can plug in anywhere uh, that's portable. Th that might actually be the best use all around. In any case, I'm not affiliated with this brand whatsoever. I just picked it up on AliExpress where sometimes you get great deals and sometimes not so much. And I thought I'd just do a review to uh, give my honest uh, feedback on this little thing. I think for 23 bucks, it definitely has some uses. If this was helpful to you, hit the like button. If you've got questions, I don't know that I can tell you much more about this thing, but I'll uh, definitely try. Leave them in the comments if you've got them. Most of all, thanks for watching.